you're going to have better flow and better cooling ability. And there's a wheel attached to it that sits inside an oval cylinder. What's up, dudes? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be filming part two of the series on Ram Assist Steering, where we're working closely with Hal Performance to upgrade the steering on the truck. If you guys are new to this series, I would definitely recommend going back to episode one and checking that out. We cover some of the essentials of the steering system, such as the Ram and how you want to go about mounting that. We also cover steering stops and we cover how to mark the box in order to send it out and get built. In this episode, we're going to be diving a little bit deeper and covering some new things such as the reservoir, an inline cooler, and the heart of the system, which is the power steering pump. So I have all that laid out on the table here, so let's just hop into it. Clearly we have a lot of things laid out on the table, so I'm gonna start at the end and then work my way down. The first thing we have is the power steering reservoir. This unit's made by Howe and it has a filter on it, which is nice. That's just gonna keep our fluid as pure as possible. And there's a few different ports on this reservoir, which I'm gonna explain through this diagram that you guys saw in the last episode. From the reservoir, we have our feed line to the pump. That's a dash 10 line, and that's the biggest one in the system, which is represented by this fitting right here. There's also a vent line coming from the pump to the reservoir. If you have hydro boost, you're gonna have a vent line coming from the hydro boost as well, and it's gonna require a T fitting right here. But since we're not running hydro boost, it's just this direct dash six vent line. So that'll come from the pump back to the reservoir. And then throughout the rest of our system, we're going from the pump to the steering box. We're gonna ignore the ram right now, but you also have two dash six lines right there going to that. From the steering box, you're going to this inline cooler, which we'll cover in a second, and then back into the reservoir. So you have a dash eight right here, a dash 10 going down to the pump, a dash six vent line from the pump, and then up here, this is where everything's venting out of. That's just gonna run to the ground and dump out any of the air. That's this reservoir in a nutshell. If you guys are wondering why there's a dash eight here and a dash 10 there and a dash six and some other parts of the system, we'll cover that in depth in the next episode. It's very important, so just stay tuned for that. Over here, we have the mount for this reservoir. I spent some time and made this yesterday. Christian welded it up and I blended everything out. Came out really nice, there's two nut certs on the back and I'll explain why those are there in a second when we actually mount this thing up. We have two hose clamps to wrap around the reservoir and that's how it gets mounted. And I've wrapped these in a heat shrink just to clean things up, just a nice sleek black look. So that's our reservoir, the mount, and its purpose in the system. The main thing you gotta remember with this thing is just to keep it at the highest point in the system, that's critical. The next piece we have out on the table is the inline cooler. This gets placed in between the steering box and the reservoir. This is a really cool looking piece, but it has an important purpose as well. There's a dash eight inlet and a dash eight outlet, but inside it expands to a dash 10. The reason this is significant is because the larger the cross-sectional area, the slower a fluid's gonna move. So by expanding the inside of this cooler, you're allowing fluid to spend more time within it and allowing it to cool for longer. And also these fins increase the surface area of the cooler and allow heat to come out even quicker. It also came with these two mounts that a lot of you probably recognize. These are the same style mounts you'll see on any off-road truck in order to mount the shock reservoir. The way this works is you have two smaller tabs that come off here, and that's gonna get welded to any surface where you might be welding this. And then you have a longer one for a hose clamp to sit on. That'll get wrapped around the cooler to cinch it tight. Moving on down the line, we have the power steering pump, which is the heart of the system. I've gone ahead and pulled the old one off, and comparing the two, there's some obvious differences. The first thing is that we now have a separate reservoir, so that knocks a huge chunk out of this pump and really simplifies it down. And this stock one only has an in and an out port, while the new one has three, the third port being the vent line that we spoke about earlier. When this is in the truck, this vent port will be sitting at 12 o'clock, exactly how the ram is. And again, that just lets air vent out of the system as easy as possible. This is our dash 10 inlet from the reservoir going into the pump. And then on the back is where we have our dash six outlet that's gonna run down to the steering box. Along with this series, I've been doing a lot of research into how steering works, and I looked into how these pumps work, and it's really interesting. You have the pulley, which I have off the old pump right now because you have to remove it to gain access to these three bolts which mount the pump. But this usually rides on this shaft, and this shaft goes into the pump, and there's a wheel attached to it that sits inside an oval cylinder. Along the wheel are fins, which as the shaft rotates will extend out and match the curvature of the oval chamber due to centrifugal force. 
The reason these fins are important is because it ensures that the same amount of fluid is kept within the two fins. Essentially how this pump works is it manipulates the ideal gas law. You have PV equals NRT, P is for pressure, V is for volume, and then on the right hand side you have N which is the number of moles, which is how much fluid you have, and as we talked about, that's constant because of those two fins, it ensures the same amount of fluid is in each chamber. And then you have R which is a constant as well. And then T is for temperature. So the right hand side of the equation isn't really changing much throughout this cycle. All the action's happening on the left hand side. As the fluid moves around the chamber, it goes into the oval part where its volume is maximized. And then it goes around and the volume contracts. And to compensate for that, the pressure has to go up. So as the pressure goes up, there's then an outlet for the fluid to go out. So that's how the pump's working and how it's increasing the pressure in the system. And then there's also a flow control valve within the pump, which is controlling how much fluid is let out. So that's pretty cool on how the pump works. I'm sure a lot of you didn't know that either. So now you know something new just from this video. This one also has higher output than the old pump. The new Howe pump is rated at 1500 PSI, whereas the old one is rated at 1200. And then the new one also flows more. So this sits at around 3.5 gallons per minute whereas the old one is around two gallons per minute. And to note, that is not what these always are. This doesn't always sit at 1500 PSI and at 3.5 gallons per minute. Those are the maximum numbers for these pumps. Usually just idling, this will sit at around 150 PSI. And then when you hit lock or you hit a big bump that sends a lot of force throughout the steering system, this pump's gonna jump up and have a higher output. Jumping back to the pulley really quickly, to remove it, I used a Matco Tools Power Steering Pump Pulley Puller. That's a word jumble right there. But this is a really nice kit made by them. It has this clamshell right here, which will come around the pulley. And then this threaded piece, which goes through the clamshell. And it drives onto this and just pushes against it and pulls this pulley off of there. It literally took like 30 seconds to get this pulley off there, so it was a breeze. I saw a lot of people online were complaining about the Harbor Freight ones. So if you're considering getting this one, I would definitely highly recommend it. And a huge shout out to our buddy Mason for getting this out to me. It's that time in the video where we're gonna start putting these parts on the truck. I've already gone ahead off camera and put the reservoir on there, so we'll check that out in just a second. But one more thing I wanted to note is on the power steering pump, this vent port right here, you may have to notch the bracket, that's what Jeff was saying, in order to get this to clear. So we'll see once I mock that up in there and check it out. But let's go check out the reservoir. Here is the glorious engine bay of the 92 F1 build. You guys remember over here we used to have the coolant reservoir but we figured that the power steering reservoir should go right there so we're going to relocate that to the other side. The reason I made the mount for the power steering reservoir the way I did is because we had this existing bracket for the coolant reservoir. I didn't want to cut that off and redo it so that's why I had the nut certs on the new one. You can see everything fits up nicely. If you're familiar with the LS motors you know the power steering pump sits down right here. And it's a little tricky with this truck since this motor was obviously transplanted into it. The clearance to the frame rail right here is a little weird to get that pump up in there so you kind of have to work with it. But I'm going to mock the new one up there and see if everything fits correctly. Judging by those last couple clips, you guys probably already guessed that we had to clearance the mount a little bit for the pump to fit correctly. So let's check out exactly what we had to get done. When I originally mocked up the pump onto this mount while everything was still on the truck, I reached my finger back there and realized there was nowhere near enough clearance right here to be able to run a fitting of any kind out of the pump. So I pulled the whole bracket off, Christian came through with an angle grinder and used a cutoff wheel to cut things out, just rough cut, and then he switched over to a stone disc and got it a little bit better. And finally, I came through with a die grinder and really smoothed things out and clearance it a little bit more. And now with a radius 90 on there, we have plenty of clearance all around and there's going to be no issues. In this whole power steering system, we're going to be running these radius 90s rather than hard 90s. And the reason for that is pretty simple. Imagine you're in a fast car and you're coming up on a corner. In order to maintain the most speed, you're going to want a corner with a larger radius. That way you can move faster. That same thought can be applied to this. If you have a hard 90, it's almost like hitting a wall. So with these radius 90s, you're gonna have better flow and better cooling ability. 
Now that we've clearanced this bracket out and the pump fits correctly, it could go back on the truck, but I'm choosing to leave it off. That way, once we get our hoses and fittings, we don't have to pull everything apart again. So we'll get that stuff, put it on the vent line, and then mount the pump, put it all on the truck, and that's when it'll go back on for the final time. So for now, it's just gonna stay here, and we can move on to getting the inline cooler mounted. After looking over the whole system, Krish and I figured out where we're gonna end up mounting the inline cooler. We're gonna go right off the engine cage, Right here, I've already sanded down where we're gonna end up mounting it. We are gonna hold off on completely mounting the inline cooler though until we get the fittings. That way we know we're not gonna have a high spot in the cooler before it goes over to the reservoir and make sure everything's below that line. And also so we have clearance to run a 90 off the bottom of the cooler down there without hitting the frame. So we have to wait on the fittings until we can get that tacked on there. So for now, we know where it's going, but we can't actually mount it. There are a few things though that I'd like to point out when you're considering where to mount your cooler. And that's gonna be from the steering box all the way until the reservoir. You want everything to be uphill. You don't want it to go up and then down because you're gonna have a high spot for air to sit in. So you want it continuously uphill. That way there's no spots for that to happen. So what we're gonna do is the box will be here. It's gonna come out 90 out of the box, come over to where we were just talking about you'll have the cooler coming up, and then from the cooler, it'll go slightly uphill over to the reservoir. So there's no chance of any high spots. On this cooler itself, you can mount it either horizontally or vertically like we're gonna do it. One thing though that I've been thinking about is if you do mount this horizontally, since it does expand inside by a little bit, there's a chance that a little bit of air can get stuck in here. It doesn't expand by a huge amount. It's just dash eight to dash 10. So there's not gonna be a ton of air getting stuck in there. So mounting it horizontally is gonna be completely fine as well. Another thing to consider is how long you're gonna make that line from the box to the reservoir. In our case, it's pretty short just cause we have no other options. That's how everything has to be mounted. That's the way our engine cage is laid out. We have no other options. However, if you do have the option to run the line to the passenger side and back while all having it uphill still, do that. The reason for doing that is you'll have a higher volume of fluid. So it's gonna take longer for it to warm up. And then it's also gonna cool better because you have more line for the heat to vent out of. That's pretty much gonna wrap up this video though. I know we covered a lot of conceptual stuff and didn't get a lot of stuff actually mounted and done on the truck. Everything's sort of at a standstill right now until we get the box back and we get the hoses and fittings. Once we do that, we can get the pump and that bracket back on. We can get this inline cooler tacked on there and welded. We can get the, the ram mounted once the box is back. So we're kind of at a standstill. Once we get all that stuff, domino effect will knock it all out. That will be next video though. If you guys enjoyed this one, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.